يا سيدي يا رسول الله لو أن إنسانا تخير ملة ما اختار إلا دينك الشرفاء المصلحون أصابع جمعت يدا هي أنت بل أنت اليد البيضاء زانتك في الخلق العظيم شمائل يغرى بهن ويولع الكرماء فإذا رحمت فأنت أب أو أم هذان في الدنيا هما الرحماء وإذا غضبت فإنما هي غضبة للحق لا ضغن ولا شحناء وإذا خطبت فللمنابر هزة تعلو الندي وللقلوب بكاء يا من له يا من له عز الشفاعة وحده وهو المكرم ما له شفعاء عرش القيامة أنت تحت لوائه والحوض أن تحيا له السقاء اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم إني توكلت عليك فلا تخزني واستعنت بك فلا تخزني يا رب العالمين All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the master of the whole universe and I bear witness openly that there is no God but Allah I bear witness openly that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our gathering and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who are seeking the Islamic knowledge so they can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they have the knowledge and they can have that time in their record by the day of judgment for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, uh, learning and for getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء those people who are the most fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those people who are the people of knowledge the people who are getting the knowledge and even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ لَتَضَعُ أَجْنِحَتَهَا لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ رِضًا بِمَا يَصْنَعَ the angels are spreading their wings for the, for the people who are seeking the knowledge because they are satisfied with, with, with whatever they are doing in, in the matter of seeking the knowledge. And not only this, Rasulullah said, You will not find a gathering in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people are seeking the knowledge, except, will, except will, they will get four benefits. Number one, نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ The inner peace will come down to them. وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels will surround them. Number three, وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention them in his gathering, means the gathering of the angels. And number four, they will get to ma'nina, the tranquility. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower all of us with his mercy and make us among those people who are getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeking the knowledge. Allahumma ameen. And as we mentioned, alhamdulillah, last time we are going to talk about a very important topic, which is piety, which is taqwa, chapter number six, page number 84. And alhamdulillah, we have our brothers and sisters here, our brothers and sisters in Zoom, and we have some of our brothers and sisters are following us on Facebook page, live streaming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And uh, alhamdulillah, we have brother Faisal, alhamdulillah, came uh, to the masjid instead of the virtual lecture. He came to be actual lecture. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Allahumma ameen. So let's, let's start my, my lecture by quizzing you and by try just to attract your minds when we talk about this topic, which is taqwa. I, I think, I believe you have heard this term before many times, taqwa, 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 taqwa. But what does it mean exactly? And here in, this, like in these lectures, we are not talking just to give a khutbah or a lecture for one time about taqwa, but we need to learn academically what does it mean? the taqwa itself. It, and it sounds very pretty well when it comes to that term you have heard before and you had lots of people, they, are, they differed in the translation. So you may 
here from uh, 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 Imam back home, he, he, he defined taqwa differently. Here in America, they translate it differently. So we need to finish, you know, that point by explaining widely, academically, uh, and, and get the comprehensive knowledge related to that term, taqwa, even if it will cost us to stay the whole week talking about taqwa, but we need to understand once forever to just to, to get the whole meaning for taqwa. And before I quiz you, of course you memorize Surah Al-Baqarah and uh, you memorize the first part of Surah Al-Baqarah. We have already mentioned even before Ramadan and during Ramadan. So at least the first five verses you memorize it. So we mentioned أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه Indeed, surely that book means the Quran has no doubt without any hesitation there is no doubt that it is the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and it has guidance for, for whom for al muttaqin again for those people who have taqwa for those people who have piety and uh, when you go for the first the very first commands in the quran also in surah al baqarah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the command not only to the muslims not only to the believers but for the whole creation for the whole servants of allah even if they accepted him or not, still he is giving them the order. Ya ayyuhan nas. And I told you, be aware of the two things. Ya ayyuhan nas and ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu. What's the difference? The first one is generic. The first one is general orders. Allah is talking to the mankind. So Allah will not talk to with the mankind Allah will not talk with them, will, give, will not give them the order to pray five times a day. Why? They didn't accept him. So Allah, when he will talk and he will say, Ya ayyuhan nas, it will be general rules. General rules. Be kind to each other. Live peacefully. Be nice to each other. You know? So Allah said, husna. Say good to everyone. So the general rules, but Allah will not talk about zakah for the whole creation. Just for whom? For the believers, for those people who accepted the message. And the other way or the other form that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the commands to his servant, specifically to the believers. When Allah says, Ya ayyuha ladina, amanu, amanu. All you who believe. That's why you will have the whole commands, all the, the, the orders for specific deeds just for the believers. And I think that makes sense. So Allah will not give the orders for specific rights, for specific deeds that you need to do for the whole creation. Allah will give it only for those people who will accept him as their God, as their master. So now, we are talking about one of these general rules in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah started this verse by saying, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, u'budu rabbakum, alladhi khalaqakum, walladhina min qablikum. Worship your Lord, worship your master, the one who created you and created those who before you. So that's a generic command, u'budu. Worship your master, the one who created you and created those who before you. So what's the reason? Why? What we should attain from that worship? He said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُمْ And you remember in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the verse of fasting, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ الصيام. All you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you, the same way it was prescribed upon those who before you. So you may 
achieve taqwa, you may attain taqwa. So it's the same concept. But now we didn't get the meaning of taqwa. And let me, let me get your answers. And please, if I have the brothers and sisters here watching me, I need you very, very brief, very brief answer. If you wanted to translate the word taqwa, what is the best translation that you will put? Please give me your answers here in the chat and tell me, till I get the answers from the brothers here. What is the meaning of taqwa? Who is ready to answer? Taqwa, yes. To fear Allah. To believe in Allah. To those who, who believe in the unseen. Way of life in the right path. That's a good answer. Who else? What's the meaning of taqwa? What, what's the first impression comes to your mind? Hajj Barakat. We are waiting for you. <laughs> yes. To empower yourself to do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked you. <laughs> okay. So to have the self-control on yourself to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that, that is the meaning of your taqwa. We have, mashallah, very good answer from, uh, uh, I don't know, Violetta. Um, um, uh, I don't know exactly whether brother or sister, uh, because it's very long, uh, Mid-Jabur, okay? Sisters, mashallah, sister, barakallahu fiki, mashallah, jazakumullahu khair. That's very good answer to avoid shirk associating, it's different answer, to avoid associating partner with Allah. We have uh, uh, that Zahaf mentioned fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother Azim Khairullah, the blessings. So taqwa in his sight means blessings. So uh, do we have any other answers before we go to the, the official one? Okay, so let's move. Let's move to the answer about taqwa. And now we are talking about, we are talking as students of knowledge. So I need you to have patience on me. Okay? Inshallah. Do you have patience for me? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Zakallahu khair. That's why you are here. Yes, alhamdulillah. That's a good answer. And inshallah, after the lecture, you will have more patience and you will give us tea, inshallah. What about this? You don't have tea, Moroccan tea? <laughs> okay. So let's move. Taqwa linguistically means comes from the root ittaqa. Ittaqa to avoid something. Ittaqa to avoid something. That's te technically, sorry, that's linguistically means. To ittaqa comes from taqwa, comes from ittaqa to avoid something. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used the linguistic meaning in his hadith when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ittaqu nara walaw bi shiqqi tamra ittaqu nar have taqwa to a nar means avoid the hellfire even with a half of a date so now the meaning linguistically means to have taq and one of the of the words that i need you to understand also equals to the linguistic meaning of taqwa, junna. Junna. You have janna. Janna, you have fatha over the jim. Junna means, again, equal to taqwa, means avoid to protect. So, wasawmu junna. Asawmu wiqaya. Fasting is like taqwa, a shield, a protection. So you need that, that's only linguistically. So you need to have a shield, a protection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that's that's the, the linguistic meaning. The Shari meaning, we have almost, almost more than 25 meanings of taqwa. Lots of scholars defined taqwa in a different terms, different ways. But let me tell you something. One of the, the, the things that makes people feel crazy when we translate the word taqwa, when we say to fear Allah. Why? Let me give you the reason. Why? Because most of people, when we say fear Allah, people does not understand. People don't understand what does it mean? Why Allah created us? He created us to let us live in peace, not in, in a difficult time. He created us to love us, not to hate us. He created us to enter Jannah, not to enter the hellfire. He created us in a way that we should love him and he will love us. So that's the equation. So when you tell somebody that taqwa means to fear Allah with that English term, fear, he will not absorb it. He will not get it. People will run from you instead of getting close to you when you translate the word taqwa that's fearing Allah. That's why it's not 100% the accurate translation for taqwa. It's not the proper term for taqwa. And before I give you the proper term, let me translate fearing Allah in the Islamic term. What does it mean? Fearing Allah is not to fear Allah himself, but to fear to lose the love of Allah. But fearing getting his punishment. Fearing Allah is not to fear Allah himself as God as a creator, but to, to fear getting away from his direction, not to fear Allah, but to fear from losing the direction of Allah. That's the, the proper explanation for fear Allah. I, I cannot accept that term, fearing Allah, without explaining what does it mean. And one of the things that Imam Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned about fearing, about the concept of fearing, he said, he said we, should, we shouldn't fear Allah that to get a, a, a close to him, but we should fear being away from Allah, losing his love. Allah created us and he loves us by nature. He, he loves us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we as human beings, when we commit sins, we lose that love. That's why fearing means is to fear to lose that love, to miss that love, to lose the direction. But again, again, it's not accurate one. But what is the most close term to be full acquainted, full aware of Allah, to have the consciousness of Allah, to have Allah in your mind, to have Allah inside yourself, to be more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be aware of Allah, full acquainted of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is to be have the, is to have the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most close, I will not say 100% accurate, but the most close term to be consciousness, to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having the consciousness of Allah. That is the meaning of taqwa. If you want it just to give in one term, which is so difficult, in one term, 
That's the close term that I will choose for taqwa. But if you wanted to explain taqwa in a statement, in a statement is to do only what pleases Allah and to be away from what displeases Allah, as Brother Barakat defined. To do only what pleases Allah and taf'al al-awamir wa an tajtalib al-nawahi is to do the commands of Allah and to be away from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to abandon, ordered you, ordered you to leave it. That's the meaning of, that's the definition of the taqwa. If you need more details, so now we, we move from one word to a statement. If you want to more understand and to have more clarification for the meaning of taqwa, let me tell you the statement of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. In another narration, it's the statement of Ubay ibn Ka'b. And the, the third narration that we have, that Umar ibn Khattab was asking Ubay ibn Ka'b. That's how we combine the two other narrations. So Umar ibn Khattab one day was asking Ubay ibn Ka'b and he said, could you please define taqwa for me? He said, imagine if you have a, if you are walking in a thorny road, you have the road, a path, and it has thorny poshes. So the thorny poshes in the middle of the road, and you are walking in this road. So what exactly you need to do to avoid that thorny poshes? He said, I will try to gather my clothes together and to tighten up, to tighten it up and try to avoid not to get hurt, not to get harmed. He said, that is the meaning of a taqwa. Again, imagine if a person walking in that road and he had, you know, like branches of tree, thorns inside in, in the road. He had uh, pieces of broken glasses and he is wearing very wide, tall garment. So what he will make, he will gather all his clothes and tighten it up to be safe, to be away. And he will walk carefully not to get harmed. He said, imagine that road is your life. And the thorns that you have on the road, it is the, the disobedience of Allah, the haram things. And you are walking carefully, try to avoid getting hurt of these thorns and reach safely to your destinies. So he said, that is the meaning of taqwa. And that is why his grandson, the grandson of Umar ibn Khattab, who is his grandson? Allahu Akbar. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He said, after he listened to that narration, he said, of course, taqwa is to do whatever pleases Allah and to avoid whatever death pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think now we can understand the meaning of taqwa. You cannot say fearing Allah. You cannot say just to, 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 to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that would not be sufficient term to explain it. But taqwa is more widely. And again, taqwa, as our brother mentioned, Taqwa is not only with your relationship with Allah. Taqwa in every aspect of our life. Even the Quran mentioned that. Taqwa with your wife. Taqwa, of course, with Allah. Taqwa in your tongue. Taqwa in your hands. You should have taqwa in your eyes. You should have taqwa 
while you are walking. You should have taqwa while you are selling and buying. You should have taqwa in every aspect in our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, what is the most haram financial uh, 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 transaction? Riba, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Right before the prohibition of the riba, the usury, Allah mentioned taqwa. He said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullah wa dharu ma baqiya min al-riba. Oh, oh believers, be consciousness of Allah and avoid taking riba, taking usury, because it's haram. So that's, that's the financial aspect. When it comes to talking, when it comes to uttering any word, Allah said this very famous ayah, Ya ayyuha ladheena aman, ittaqullah, وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Allahu Akbar All you who believe be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you speak speak the right speak the truth so even so why Allah brought taqwa with talking why Allah talked with taqwa or about taqwa in the financial issues that tells you that taqwa is widely spread in our religion that you will not find any action, any action, and, with, uh, and without having taqwa in it. That's taqwa. So taqwa in your worship, taqwa in your relationship with others, taqwa even with your wife. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the relationship between the man and his wife, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran that's based on taqwa. Taqwa. That's, that's something we have to realize. So everything has taqwa in our life. But let me tell you something. And, and, and I just need an answer with yes or no. That, that makes, makes it easy for the brothers and sisters who are watching us to write yes or no. So be ready. Do you think that taqwa has different levels or maybe you have one person has taqwa 70%, 30%, 0% or taqwa is, is, is one, you know, one thing, whether you have taqwa or not. What do you think? Taqwa has percentage, yes or not? No, no, no. Taqwa has percent yes. different from one to another. Yes. yes. I, it seems like you have, we have conscience here. Yes. Okay. We have in the majority of Islamic Center of Newport Rich scholars agreed, alhamdulillah, on that point. So what do you think about this? <laughs> yes, levels. We have Sister Violeta. Yes, levels. Dr. Siddiqui, yes, levels. Brother is one, yes, levels. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Still we have, we are waiting if, if we still have, uh, any of our brothers still have another point. So it seems like, mashallah, all people agreed that taqwa has levels. Yes. لا تجتمع أمتي على ضلالة. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said, my ummah will not gather together in one opinion and it's something bad. It should be something good. And alhamdulillah, you agreed. And brother Mutia, mashallah, said yes. Jazakallah khairan. Now our scale is heavy. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. So let me tell you something. Taqwa, as we mentioned, has aspects. So you have some of the, of the, uh, some of the, in, in some points, in, in, in some sections, you must have 100% of taqwa. In other positions, you can just have 
whatever you can do in regards of taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Have taqwa to Allah as much as you can. Let me tell you something. If I told you, for example, for example, that the best thing is to do hajj. Whenever you have the ability, the financial or the physical ability. Imagine someone, he does not have the physical ability and he needs to go hajj. He cries, Imam, I need to do hajj. I will tell him using this ayah, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُ be consciousness of Allah as much as you can. As long as you, are, you can't do it, so no problem at all. But let me tell you something. When it comes to salah, what is the best way to perfect your salah? Is to have taqwa. Am I right? But to reach to that perfection, you need how much for taqwa? So to reach to the perfection, to the highest, you are doing your wudu, for example. So don't say, okay, I will not make wudu perfect because Allah said, be conscious of Allah as much as you can. So my ability is to, you know, with a lazy way, doing my wudu, careless, paying not attention, not don't pay attention for my wudu because Allah said, Fattakullaha mastata'atum. Be conscious of Allah as much as you can. You cannot apply this ayah for every ibadah. When it comes to the sunnah, sunnah, for example, someone we say we say to him, you should pray at night as much as you can, so you can use this ayah. But on the other side, you cannot find a person who leaving his five times prayers, leaving Maghrib, leaving Isha, and when you talk with him, brother, why you are you doing like this? He will tell you, Allah said, That's not counted. That's not considered here. This ayah, be conscious of Allah as much as you can is not in the mandatory, mandatory actions or obligatory actions. It's only in the sunan. Someone is paying zakah. Let's say his zakah equals like $2,000. He will say, no, 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 you know what? I will pay just 500 because Allah said, be conscious of Allah as much as you can. That's why I will pay 500. No, that does not work. So in ibadah, in the pillars, in the essential acts of the deen, you need to have what? 100%. 100% to perfect your, your worship, to perfect your ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ One of the meanings that you will find in the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ About Ramadan. Someone said, you know what, Imam? I am not complaining from any sickness or any, you know, uh, illness. I have no reason, but I don't feel that I need to, to complete the 30 days of Ramadan. Why? Allah said, be conscious of Allah, have taqwa to Allah as much as you can. No, you are cheating, man. You are cheating. Because Allah said, الْعِدْ To perfect your fasting. To perfect Ramadan means is to fast the whole month of Ramadan. That is the case. 
So taqwa has many aspects in our life. Yes, sir. Sheikh, Yes. Yes. Now. Yes. So when it comes to ibadah, when it comes, so imagine, so my brother here is talking about when it comes to the, the acts of worship, the pillars of Islam, it needs to be 100%. But imagine if someone does not have lots of money and he came to the Imam. <laughs> I remember now a very funny story happened with me that was like like 10 years ago okay <laughs> and that story put me in trouble okay and let me let me tell you the what, what my, my my thought first imagine if someone does not have lots of money and he wants to give a charity and he said imam you know what i only have 200 dollars and i i don't have anything i'm waiting for my my paycheck I, I, I don't know how much I can pay as a charity. I need to pay a charity. So you cannot give him a specific or fixed number. So that time you can use this ayah. Give whatever you can. Because it's taqwa for Allah. And Allah said, be conscious of Allah as much as you can. So give whatever you can. So don't stress yourself and don't neglect your family members, don't waste their money, give them something, give for the sake of Allah something. If I, if I am in your situation, I may, I may give like $30, I may give $20 and keep the rest till I get my paycheck. Then I can give 200 for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is how Allah told us to use our minds. And I remember the story, I was giving the, the lecture in my masjid in Al Awqaf in Egypt, and I was giving about the virtue of giving for the sake of Allah, and you have to give, okay, without fearing poverty. Okay. <laughs> and I said, uh, among the, the seven categories that people would be under the shade of the, the throne of Allah, the one who gave with his right hand, without his left hand knows what he already gave. So I had one of the youth and he was working night shift. So he attended the lecture and right after Isha, he went to his job and he called me at night. He said, you know, Imam, you put me in trouble. I told him what? He said, I listened to your lecture and I went and he went to the, he has to pass a tunnel walking. He said, while I'm going outside the tunnel, I found a man asking for money, you know, begging for money. So I said, I remembered your speech. I remembered what you said. And I had two things. I had 100 pounds, Egyptian pounds in my, uh, he, didn't, he didn't remember. And I had one pound. My intention is to pay the one pound as a charity. So, all of the sudden, I put my right hand in my pocket. Then I gave without seeing, without watching, without looking. Then I went, <laughs> when I went to the transportation to take the pass, I put and I found the one pound what remains with me. Then he said, I started to make dua against you, Imam. I said, you put me in trouble. I will not listen to your, <laughs> you wasted all my money. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. I said, you know what? <laughs> you, you don't have fiqh. You don't have, I didn't mean that. You can look at it. Yes, you can look. You can look. But what does it mean that your left hand will not know what you spend? It's, it's not literally meaning. It means don't talk about it. Don't spread it. Don't, don't show up, you know? Don't feel, don't go and take the microphone of Newport Richie Masjid. Hey guys, I paid hundred dollars for the sake of Allah. You know, don't call your family members. You know what? I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm so generous. 
That's the meaning. So you know what? Wallah, I told him, okay, stay in, in your place and I will send somebody to give you money to save you. He said, you know what? I started to think to go back to the, to the poor person to fight with him, to tell him, give me my hundred, you know, the, my hundred pounds. That's the case. It's, it's one of the things that uh, you need to understand. Taqwa, in every aspect of our life, inshallah, tomorrow, we will talk about the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Taqwa can be the only way let you get from any trouble. If you are seeking an outlet from any hardship, have taqwa. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Talaq. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Taqwa can do two main things. Can do many. But the two major things that Taqwa can do is to find an outlet from your troubles, from your tribulations, and is to, when, to give you more risk. So for those people who are seeking risk, they need to have taqwa. If you need money, if you need sustenance, if you need child, if you are looking for any kind of risk, so have taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have taqwa to Allah. And tomorrow, inshallah, I will share with you one of the good stories that you will like it about how Allah can give you outlet from your troubles if you have taqwa. So taqwa is the key, is the spiritual key to find an outlet. And I remember that man who was, who, who, who was in a trap made by a woman to let him be in the haram, to let him have a relationship with her in a haram way. Then he made a dua, but dramatically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him because of his taqwa. She put him in a trap. She closed the doors and she said, I'm here ready for you. But because of his taqwa, Allah saved him. And by the way, he is not Yusuf alayhi salam. Another man, another person. Allah saved him. <laughs> not Yusuf, friend. I will keep you till, till tomorrow. So inshallah, I'm sure that you will come to listen to this, last, uh, to this uh, story and to continue talking about Taqwa, inshallah. Please, I need you to invite your friends, your family members, your children to watch this lecture. Now it's easy, alhamdulillah. We have Zoom, we have Facebook. Now you can stay in your house, listen to the lectures and be aware. You remember, we, when I came to the masjid, we made a competition. Bring someone and you will be rewarded. And if you brought somebody to attend the lecture, you will be rewarded and he will be rewarded. You will attend, you will listen to the lecture and you will take double of the reward. Whatever he will get, let's say, you brought your nephew, you brought your cousin. And after the lecture, Allah gave him 1 million hasana. And he gave you 1 million hasana for you because you attended and you will get another million hasana because of your cousin. So the dunya reward in the masjid, you will get tea, you will get biscuits. <laughs> the reward in dunya, you will get biscuits, you will get muffin by Dr. Yusuf, okay? But be aware, social distance muffin, okay? <laughs> Jazakumullah <laughs> khaira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan for attending and for listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته